Wait a minute, I know you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 pre-fame celebrity appearances on Seinfeld. Have you noticed that women today are, you know, they seem bigger? Well, a lot of women are having them done. Really? Yeah. How do you like that? For this list, we're looking at actors who made guest spots on the famed sitcom Seinfeld before they had their big break. This means we won't be including celebrities who were already known from other TV and film appearances. As much as we loved seeing Courtney Cox as Jerry's girlfriend Meryl, she was already established as Lauren Miller on Family Ties. We'll always have pancakes. <laughs> Bye, Jerry. Did you miss any of these cameos on the first watch? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Jennifer Coolidge as Jody. Are you lost? Before she was Stifler's mom or doing the bend and snap, Coolidge began her career in several small voice acting and television roles. Seinfeld was actually Coolidge's first television appearance, as she plays a masseuse who's dating Jerry. It's just, I hate that type. Ah, he's a bad seed. <laughs> now you, however, you are like. With a long string of romantic partners, the comedian always found some amusingly shallow reason to end the relationship. In Jody's case, George obsesses over why she doesn't like him. She didn't like me. Look, it's not like you're going to be spending a lot of time with her. So she doesn't like me? No. <laughs> While Jerry keeps dropping less than subtle hints that he wants a massage from her. Boy, my neck is killing me. <laughs> Needless to say, Coolidge wasn't around for the long haul. I'm getting out of here. Don't call me. Don't worry. Number 19, Lauren Graham as Valerie. You're feeling pretty good about yourself right now, aren't you? Yeah. Do you want me to get you a mirror? I'm back, let's go. Leading up to her starring role on Gilmore Girls, Lauren Graham had plenty of small turns on a variety of NBC shows. In 1997, the coffee-drinking fast talker who we know as Lorelai Gilmore was another one of Jerry's love interests. You didn't have to do that. I mean, the dinner and the play and the handsome cab ride. Well, I just wanted to, you forgot the gift certificate to Barnes & Noble. Oh. You know, make a good impression. Taking on the part of Valerie, Graham's on-screen quirk was that she constantly rearranged people on her speed dial. After a particularly bad date, Jerry begins obsessing over his lowly position on Valerie's telephone list. Hello? Hello? Who's this? Jane? What number did you dial? Seven? His fixation on the ranking soon leads to an unfortunate battle with Valerie's stepmother for the number one spot. It's taken me 13 years to climb up to the top of that speed dial, and I don't intend to lose my spot to you. <laughs> but I never... You just stay away from that phone. Number 18, Maggie Wheeler as Cynthia. Oh. My. God. We almost didn't recognize Janice without her trademark ear-splitting voice. <laughs> Two years before she first debuted as Chandler's insufferable girlfriend on Friends, Maggie Wheeler played Elaine's friend Cynthia. In the episode The Fix-Up, Elaine and Jerry conspire to set up Cynthia and George when the two complain about being single. Come on, let's do it. I think they'll really get along. Even after finding out that George is unemployed and balding, Cynthia agrees to see him. He's, he's kind of, just kind of, mm, losing his hair. He's bald? No! No, 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 he's not bald. He's balding. <laughs> so he will be bald. Yep. To everyone's surprise, their relationship blossoms after a pregnancy scare brings out Costanza's noble side. Unfortunately, in classic Seinfeld fashion, Cynthia seems to rethink her decision when she sees George's terrible table manners. <laughs> Number 17, Peter Krause as Tim. You might even want to throw some big stuff, you know, some of the... Oh! Oh! oh no, he's gonna no, put his back out. Again. No, I Come like on, it. Drew. Even with leading roles in shows such as Six Feet Under, Dirty Sexy Money, and Parenthood, Krause made his mark on Seinfeld as a somewhat sinister character. When Jerry and George decide to impersonate a man named O'Brien in order to take a limo from the airport, they're led to believe they're being taken to see the Knicks play at Madison Square Garden. We are going to the Knicks game! Michael Jordan! Die! We're going to the Knicks game! 
Instead, they're surprised when two new passengers get into the car. Tim and Ava are big fans of O'Brien, who, turns out, is the leader of a neo-Nazi union. We're faithful readers of his newsletter. Newsletter? <laughs> right, of course, his great book, Big Game. Oh, yes, he's uh, very proud of his work in the uh, big game. Despite his few lines, Krause brings an unnerving energy to this hilarious yet uncomfortable scene. It's just a game. Remember that, kids. <laughs> just a game. He's so humble. Don't forget what you wrote in the epilogue. The fate of the world depends on the outcome of this game. Number 16, Lisa Edelstein as Karen. Appearing in two episodes as George's girlfriend, Edelstein's Karen was more than another one of his fleeting failed relationships. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. George even comes to the conclusion that he loves her. Why? Because he will clean his bathtub before she comes over, of course. On your knees, Ajax, hands, scrubbing, the whole deal. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think you're in love. However, when George constantly talks about how Jerry's girlfriend Jody doesn't like him, Karen provides an ultimatum, her or Jody. Not surprisingly, George chooses the latter. I'm sorry, Karen, I know I care for you, but I just can't stand when someone doesn't like me. Well, now I hate you. That I'm used to. As for Edelstein, she would become Dr. Lisa Cuddy on seven seasons of House. Not too shabby. You know you're gonna pay for that. I'm paying for it right now, with wisdom. Number 15, Bob Odenkirk as Ben. This is the guy you want. This is the guy I'd hire. As a writer for Saturday Night Live in the late 80s and early 90s, as well as a co-writer of Mr. Show with Bob and David, Odenkirk surely knows his comedy. I didn't you say anything stupid? By anything stupid, I mean anything at all. Before he was the confident and cunning Saul Goodman, this early stint saw a young Bob Odenkirk as Elaine's boyfriend, a bumbling, incompetent medical student. In this 1996 episode, Elaine seems to be more attracted to the fact that Ben is almost a doctor. Well, this is my boyfriend, Dr. Ben Gelfin. Oh, I, well, I'm an intern. Hey, stop kidding, Ben. She brags about this in spite of the fact that he failed his medical exam three times. She gets a taste of reality when someone collapses at the diner, and Ben is completely useless. Can you please tell him what to do? Like what? Shouldn't he elevate his legs? Right. Elevate your legs! Luckily, Odenkirk is a more than capable comedian. Is that like the one your mom works at? Uh, is she still offering the two-for-one discount? <laughs> Number 14, Brad Garrett as Tony. I think I know what's going on here. And I just want to hear it from you. With animated shows such as Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling under his belt, Brad Garrett was mostly known for his voice work early in his career. Don't worry, Junkyard. When we get the junk wagon tuned up, you're gonna beat the shorts off Piper. But in this 1996 episode, Garrett made his mark as a mechanic obsessed with Jerry's sob. The actor's natural deep voice and imposing figure made him a perfect fit for this slightly menacing character. When was the last time you even checked the washer fluid? But the washer fluid is fine. The washer fluid is not fine! <laughs> He's deeply frustrated by Jerry's neglect of the car and takes matters into his own hands. In the same year that he appeared on Seinfeld, Garrett started his nine-year run on Everybody Loves Raymond. Talk about a sitcom success story. Thank you. Number 13, Mariska Hargitay as Melissa Shannon. It's like a bald convention out there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I uh, made a faux pas. With a range of television appearances in the 80s and 90s, it's no surprise that the tough Olivia Benson also made her way into the Seinfeld universe. Started from the bottom. But you're here now. And I don't know what your legal aid's been telling you, but you're not getting out of here anytime soon. By the end of the fourth season, Jerry and George finally get the green light from NBC to film the pilot for their show about nothing. As the two start auditioning actors, the lovely Melissa Shannon reads for the part of Elaine. When she makes a few funny remarks at George's expense, he cuts her audition short. So how about the guy wearing sweatpants? I mean, did he do that for the part? Does he walk around like that? Even though Elena Vol's character gets the part in the end, we wish we got a bit more of Melissa in this episode. What was that look? What look? That look you just gave me. I gave a look? Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot, George. Number 12, Peter Dinklage as James's telephone voice. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. 
You'd be forgiven if you didn't initially catch this actor's contribution to Seinfeld in the first minute of the episode The Wink. This is your wake-up service. It's 7.15. Years before he was known as Tyrion Lannister, Dinklage had an uncredited role as the voice of Elaine's wake-up caller, James. Not date last night. <laughs> I wish. Woman with a sexy voice like yours, it's hard to believe you're waking up alone. <laughs> really? However, when Elaine decides to meet James in person, he's played by Brian McNamara. Dinklage's deep and captivating voice was essential to the premise of the episode, though. The wake-up guy asked you out? Yeah, I've never seen him, but I feel like we have this weirdly intimate relationship. In the same year as this Season 7 cameo, Dinklage made his film debut in the dark comedy Living in Oblivion. The rest, as they say, is history. Number 11. Michael Chiklis as Steve Pocatello who is it? Mr. Pocatillo! Who? You mean you don't recognize my voice? Given his hard-hitting performance as Detective Vic Mackey on The Shield, it's hard to imagine Michael Chiklis in a comedic role. Or with hair, for that matter. You said if I was ever in the city, I'm in the city! You certainly are! Chiklis gave an outrageous performance on Seinfeld, however, as Steve Pocatello. After hosting Jerry at a party, Steve takes Seinfeld up on his offer to stop by his apartment when in New York, making himself right at home when he gets there by ordering up a sex worker. Maybe we should call one of those escort services. <laughs> yeah. I saw one of them advertised before in the cable station. 555 five, five, Love. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry not only has to pay for the pretty woman's services, but also pays an even heftier price when the cops show up. Is this your apartment? Yeah, but... I'm on arrest for solicitation of prostitution. Oh, wait a sec, I... <laughs> Suddenly, Kramer starts to seem like an ideal house guest by comparison. <laughs> Number 10. Sarah Silverman as Emily. Well, that was all right. Huh? Yeah. Well, um... Good night. Good night. <laughs> Following up her short stint on Saturday Night Live, Sarah Silverman landed a guest role as Kramer's girlfriend, Emily. While the sex is pretty all right, Emily gets just a little too clingy for Kramer's taste when spending the night. <laughs> Fed up with her jimmy legs, Kramer manages to convince Emily that they'd be better off sleeping alone. Yeah, because she's throwing off my whole sleep. She's got the jimmy legs. <laughs> jimmy legs? Jimmy legs. <laughs> When Kramer becomes paranoid that somebody's breaking into his apartment, though, he starts to desire somebody to cuddle with at night. There was a man he was trying to get into my apartment last night. He was jiggling the doorknob for 25 minutes. Alas, Emily has also flip-flopped. Fortunately, they find the solution in a set of separate beds. Oh, come on, man. Meet me halfway. You're not easy, Kramer. I know. Number 9. Jeremy Piven as Michael Barth. George. Everything all right? I just came from the podiatrist. Yeah, I got something wrong with my foot. I got a little gangrene. They're probably gonna have to amputate. <laughs> if you go back and watch this classic Seinfeld episode, you might not even recognize Jeremy Piven. As Michael Barth, Piven plays an actor who auditions to play George in the Seinfeld show within a show. A man gave me a you know, massage. <laughs> Sporting a balding head, glasses, and a dumpy persona, he seems like a dead ringer for George, even if the real George can't see the resemblance. New sneakers? Yeah. What do you need new sneakers for? I like sneakers. I didn't make a decision which ones to wear. I'd go crazy if I decided which sneakers to wear every day. Ah, you're crazy anyway. <laughs> Evidence to Piven's commitment to character is seen already in this early role and was fleshed out completely in the career-defining character of Ari Gold in Entourage. You wanna hug it out? No, not really. Let's hug it out, bitch. Of course, Ari has a much fouler mouth on him. Get the f out! Number eight, Denise Richards as Molly Dalrymple. Hello. Oh, hi. hi. I'm Molly. Ah, uh, I'm Jerry. Uh, George. Uh, we're here discussing our script with your father. Yeah. He just read it. <laughs> She may have only appeared on screen for a couple of minutes, but this brief appearance on Seinfeld may be one of Denise Richards' most memorable roles. So you live with your mother, huh? Uh, yeah. The voice is very difficult, mm. especially on the kid. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm the result of my parents having stayed together, so you never know. <laughs> 
As the daughter of an NBC executive overseeing Jerry's pilot, she is in the wrong place at the wrong time for George, who can't help but sneak an extended peek when the 15-year-old displays her cleavage. For the record, Richards was 22 at the time. The hapless George is caught in the act as Bob Balaban delivers one of the show's most hilarious lines. Get a good look, Costanza? George got a good look, and he probably got an even better look if he ever saw Wild Things. Number 7. Deborah Messing as Beth Luckner If you're a fan of Will & Grace, you'll be happy to know that Megan Mullally wasn't the only cast member to land on Seinfeld. I don't hear very well out of this ear, so I um, always try to sit to the right of people. I'll shout. <laughs> and while Jerry dated an assortment of actresses that would eventually become household names, Deborah Messing proved to be one of the most memorable objects of his affection as Beth. Although she's originally spoken for, Jerry eagerly awaits for Beth's marriage to crumble so he can score a date. I realized after three years of marriage that David's little quirks were getting on my nerves a little. Yeah, three years is a long time to be married. <laughs> it takes a couple of episodes, but Jerry finally gets an opening to ask Beth out. At first, it seems to be a match made in heaven, both being anti-dentites and all. Hey, what do you call a doctor who fails out of med school? What? A dentist. <laughs> Jerry begins to second-guess their relationship, however, upon realizing Beth is also a racist and an anti-Semite. Dentist. <laughs> yeah, who needs them? <laughs> Not to mention the blacks and the Jews. <laughs> Whoa, did that really come out of Grace Adler's mouth? Not gonna see that on Nickelodeon. <laughs> Number six, Kristen Davis as Jenna. I'm really happy with my old toothbrush. Oh, trust me, that one was doing more harm than good. Kristen Davis went on to have intercourse with lots of men on Sex and the City. Do you think I'm a whore? Well, you have had a decent amount of bone in you. Even before getting her big break as Charlotte York, though, Davis was no stranger to putting unsanitary objects in her mouth. hi -o. In the Seinfeld episode The Pothole, Davis plays Jenna, the latest in a long line of Jerry's girlfriends. Jerry dooms their relationship upon dropping her toothbrush in the toilet and retrieving it. <laughs> Jenna then proceeds to obliviously brush her teeth. <laughs> While they make up after the incident, Jerry can't bring himself to stay with a woman he's seen covered in toilet water. Have a nice life. Jenna will have to settle for Banya. Oh, this is awkward. Don't worry, Kenny. After dating Jerry, you're a pleasure. <laughs> Number five, Jane leaves as Marla. George, Marla. Marla. George, Jerry, Stacy. Stacy. Jerry. George, Stacy. Stacy. George. As one of Jerry's more memorable girlfriends, Marla was an English closet designer who also happened to be a virgin. What? Was it something I said? She's a virgin. She just told me. Well, I didn't know. Well, it's not like spotting a toupee. <laughs> In season four, she's subjected to the group's strange antics when she finds out about their contest of self-denial and dumps Jerry on the spot. And to think how close I came to you being the one! I must have been out of my mind! Luckily for her, when John F. Kennedy Jr. comes to see Elaine, he arrives just in time to comfort Marla and sweep her off her feet. Oh my god, I, got, I gotta go. I gotta no, no, go. no, no, he just left. What? Yeah, he was out there talking to Marla. Like some other stars on this list, Jane Leaves landed her best-known role on another sitcom shortly after the Seinfeld guest spot. As the eccentric Daphne Moon, Leaves became a fixture on a little show called Frasier. Well, what's your diagnosis now? It's a clear-cut case of post-Sherry euphoria. <laughs> Number four, Terry Hatcher as Sidra Holland. Aren't you gonna get that? No. Well, what if it's an emergency? Oh, there's no emergencies. Jerry, come on, it's an emergency! <laughs> Even with eight seasons on Desperate Housewives under her belt, Terry Hatcher will always be best remembered for her unforgettable appearance on Seinfeld as Sidra. Oh, hi. I'm Elaine. Hi. <laughs> Jerry is immediately drawn to Sidra's natural beauty until he finds out that her breasts may not be all that natural. Well, I think you'll find out soon enough. 
Just when Jerry is about to uncover the truth firsthand, bad timing gets in the way, as usual. I can't believe you sent a woman into the sauna to do that That to was me. an accident! I think you're both mentally ill. Oh. Before walking out on Jerry, however, Sidra lets him know what he's missing. That has got to be among the show's most quotable lines, which was partially ad-libbed by Hatcher. And by the way, they're real oh. and they're spectacular. <laughs> and it comes back when you least expect it. Oh, and by the way, they're real and they're spectacular. <laughs> Number three, Patrick Warburton as David Putty. <laughs> David, you are so funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's right. Even though he only appeared in 10 episodes, this actor made a lasting impact as Elaine's on and off again boyfriend, Putty. I knew what I was getting into. She's a bitter, unstable person. <laughs> I mean, the sex was good. I'm sure it was fine for her. From his face painting to his constant high fives, this is one recurring character we won't be forgetting anytime soon. Warburton's baritone, monotonous voice made his character's quirks even more hilarious. Hey, how come people don't have dip for dinner? Why is it only a snack? Why can't it be a meal, you know? <laughs> Putty's weird habits deeply frustrate Elaine to no end, but she simply couldn't stay away from him. Since Seinfeld, you might recognize Warburton for his many voice acting roles, such as Joe Swanson on Family Guy. Hey, Peter, check it out, my new electric wheelchair. <laughs> and Kronk in The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, they're so easy to make. I'll get you the recipe. Number two, John Favreau as Eric the Clown. Oh, very good, very good. All right, go fold your little balloon animals, Eric. Eric. <laughs> what kind of name is that for a clown, huh? Before directing box office hits like Elf and Iron Man, John Favreau was primarily known for being a character actor. One of Favreau's earliest acting gigs was as Eric, a clown hidden under a rainbow wig and makeup. Bozo? No. B O Z O. Sorry. Uh... You've never heard of Bozo the Clown? No. Despite his profession, Eric isn't especially fun loving or friendly. He doesn't even know who Bozo is, much to the shock of George. Hey, man, what are you hassling me for? This is just a gig, it's not my life. I don't know who Bozo is. What, is he a clown? What, is he a clown? What are you kidding me? Well, what is he? Yes, he's a clown! Even if Eric doesn't make the kids laugh until they drop dead, though, he does save their lives when he puts out a fire with his clown shoes. So what was the fire? Just a couple of greasy hamburgers? Yeah. Eric, the clown, put it out with his big shoe. <laughs> George, on the other hand, is not quite so calm in a crisis. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Brian Cranston as Dr. Tim Watley How did you find me? From Hal Wilkerson to Walter White, Brian Cranston has hit it out of the park with one great character after another. Interestingly, other Breaking Bad stars have made guest appearances on Seinfeld, such as Anna Gunn and the aforementioned Bob Odenkirk. One notable role that helped launch Cranston to mainstream popularity was Tim Watley. Man, you are something else. <laughs> no one could ever put a label on you, huh? We'll see. Whether making out with Elaine, oh, Elaine. <laughs> having kinky sex in his office, or converting to Judaism for the jokes. What's up? I'll tell you what's up. I'm a Jew. <laughs> Excuse me? I'm a Jew. I finished converting two days ago. It was always fun when this dentist popped up. This can be attributed to both Cranston's performance and the Seinfeld writer's ability to squeeze grade A material out of even the most minor characters. You have no idea what my people have been through. <laughs> the Jews? No, the dentists. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.